Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Victoria, if you guys are new here, I make videos about fashion, lifestyle, parenting, and travel. And today's video is going to be a baby one. So let's just jump right into it. I debated making this video for the longest time because I'm not personally somebody who enjoys making like negative theme videos, but I felt like this would probably help anybody who is also potentially going to be a parent soon or is a first time parent, or is just like wondering because when it comes to babies, it is very overwhelming. The whole concept overall of like, being a parent and then buying things and like feeding them and like just mm, there's a lot to consider so I want to share with you my experience very honest truthful experience I'm not being paid or sponsored by any of these brands to speak about their products I just want to let you guys know what we've been loving and not have been loving so much and lessons that we've learned when it comes to buying things after spending the past five months with Harrison so yeah let's just jump right into it I want to preface I'm gonna be splitting this video into two parts like overrated and then underrated baby stuff. So this is mainly our personal experience. When I watched a lot of these videos after I had Harrison and even before I was like, do these products just not work for you? Or do you just think that they're just like not good for anybody in general? So I do want to preface these are just things that we found out ended up didn't necessarily working for us or I think you could potentially do without if you are in a pinch and you don't want to spend too much money on baby stuff. Because let's be real, babies grow out of stuff really quickly and I don't just mean clothes and toys I just mean products that you use for them a lot of them have very short lifespans some of them are like a couple of months some of them are like six months but at the end of the day as they grow up they grow out of things and if you don't want to spend that much money these are the things that I think that you can probably cut back on a little bit and also stuff that people are going to give you a lot of anyway so don't necessarily spend your own money on it save your money for the more functional not fun things that you need to buy for your kids all right so let's jump right into it we're going to start off with the overrated baby stuff Number one most overrated thing for me, I think that we noticed right off the bat was waddles. Waddles are great if you're planning to swallow your baby and keep their arms in. Harrison definitely was a baby that needed his hands kept to himself so that he wouldn't startle himself awake every time he was moving or sleeping. It's also great because it kind of simulates like the womb where they're in like a tight environment. So everybody always loves to get swaddles. There's so many cute designs and patterns and prints and colors. And we ended up with like a ton. I think we had like almost 20 some swaddles. We only ever really rotated through at most maybe eight to ten but honestly if I'm gonna be really truthful I only really think that we needed no more than like five to six at any given point so you can use swaddles for a bunch of different things I will list out what we do use them for at first we used them to swaddle him when he needed his arms swaddled in and like to wrap him at night of course when he was sleeping I would say that Harrison grew out of his swaddle and we just started letting him sleep with his hands free at around four months so after that point we no longer needed swaddles anymore we also use swaddles at one point to drape over the side of his bassinet just because um, it is mesh and it let a lot of light into it during the day since he was not co-sleeping with us but he was room sharing with us he would sleep next to me in his bassinet and our master has just like diffuse light coming in it was really bright for him so I blocked it off so that he could sleep a little bit longer throughout the day so we used it for that but then once we started moving him to his nursery where he could sleep by himself and there's blackout curtains I no longer had a purpose for that anymore we also use swaddles to cover his change pad so that if he does accidentally pee or stain it we can throw the swaddle into the wash. I was just at this point looking for more reasons to use these swaddles so that we wouldn't be wasting them. That one I think we'll continue using for quite a while until he's like no longer requires a change table to change him when he can stand up and we're just using pull-ups I think. And then I also use a swaddle to throw over his car seat or stroller when we're out and about and it's too bright and he needs to sleep or if we're out in the grocery store in like a really packed and dense environment that we don't really want people kind of like seeing him and accessing him we just don't want too much like crazy airflow going through so those are the main reasons that we used a swaddle for and the only two primary ones that I use anymore probably are to cover his car seat or stroller and to put on his change pad table we did at one point use swaddles to wrap around his bassinet mattress whenever he would like throw up on it or have an accident and we had to throw it into the wash but honestly we did crazy amounts of laundry within the first like month of having Harrison and that's when we constantly had to rotate his swaddles through because he was always throwing up or having accidents and we just didn't really know how to handle him yet but after a month we really understood him and our routine with him and we really slowed down how often we were changing and washing our swaddles so I would think like after one month you don't really need to use them as frequently as you do and it significantly nosedive down even further after like four months 
month. So I wouldn't recommend going overboard when it comes to swaddles. Plus people love to gift swaddles for some reason, like an easy grab gift for anybody. So don't buy too many for yourself. Maybe just like one or two if you find some really cute ones that you really love or put specific ones that you really like onto your registry and tell anybody who wants to buy you gifts to get like those specific ones. So you don't end up with too many swaddles. And I think five to six is a decent amount, more than enough. And we have like almost 20. So I have a drawer full of swaddles now that are like currently out of rotation, like five or six that are just like sitting there that aren't used and they're clean. And then I have another full like 10 that are sitting in the box that are like brand new and we haven't even used yet. So I recommend don't buy too many swaddles. In line with like fabric that I think is overrated are baby towels. So there is two schools of thought. Some people love to bathe and wash their babies every single night so that they can settle into routine and fall asleep. And then there's also the other school of thought where you shouldn't be bathing your baby that often so that their skin doesn't dry out. Now, when people bathe their babies every night, it doesn't mean they're necessarily washing them head to toe with soap. A lot of the time it's just warm water play so that the baby can get used to being in the water. We ended up after the first month, we didn't bathe him at all. But after month one, we would bathe Harrison about once a week. And then at about, I think month two and a half, we started ramping it up and giving him two baths a week. One of them was a soap bath and the other one was just a water bath. And at about like three and a half months, we started giving him soap baths every single bath that he's getting. And he's still only getting two a week. The reason we only really bathe him twice a week is because he doesn't really do anything to get himself dirty. The only reason he gets dirty is either if he has reflux, burps or spits up milk or has an accident down below. Otherwise he's not doing too much physical activity where he's sweating all the time. He literally is still just on his back in the stomach and isn't crawling or moving anywhere yet. That's capable of getting dust or dirt on him. I think once he starts getting a little bit more mobile, we're definitely gonna have to ramp up the baths, if not just adding more water baths to the rotation so he can like fully just like rinse off any dust or dirt. But I think come the summer, we're probably gonna have to give him a bath like every second day once it gets really hot and sweaty and he gets sticky out. Going back to bath towels, you don't really need that many because like what I have maybe three or four for myself. I wash them like once every couple of weeks and I shower once every week or so and I use them like once or twice a week. So for myself, I don't need a lot of towels Baby doesn't need a lot of towels. There are lots of cute ones out there. Have like one or two in rotation if you feel like you have to use them frequently. But other than that, like once we're done, we hang it up. It has like a couple of days to dry before we need to use it again. And then if we do need to throw it into the wash, we do get a couple of days for it to dry once it's clean before we do need to use it again. So I don't think you need more than really two bath towels at any given point. We only have one, so don't stuck up in those. I think those are super, super overrated. Newborn clothes. Another super overrated thing to buy for your baby. We bought Harrison, like, not too many, like a healthy amount. I think I had newborn clothes, like probably eight different outfits. He was on the smaller side. So we were able to get him to wear his newborn clothes up until he was like three and a half months or so. And that's when he started to fit into like the one to two months. And now he's having growth spurts and just like going through clothes really quickly. Don't buy too many newborn clothes because you don't know when your baby comes out if they're even gonna fit in it to begin with. You also don't know what your rotation is gonna look like through these clothes. When we first brought him home, we were changing his outfit like upwards of eight times a day because he would constantly spit up on it. We didn't know how to control feeding him properly. He would leak. But now we're at a point where like he can manage his cleanliness quite a bit on his own. And we can also help manage that when it comes to feeding him. They're only really changing him like maybe three times a day max. And that's primarily if he has like an accident or like leaks out from his diaper. Besides that, he more or less just wears one outfit for the entire day and he's pretty good at that. So don't overinvest in your newborn clothes. You're gonna end up buying way too many and not get enough wear out of it. I definitely have like three to four pieces where he only really got to wear them a handful of times. And at the end, when we realized that he was too small for them, I was like, ugh, I didn't get enough wear out of this. Like I, they were so cute. So like specialty occasion pieces, don't invest in them too much because you're not gonna get a lot of wear out of them when they're at that stage. So be warned, I think newborn clothes, they're great. Just don't go overboard, which is why I say it's overrated because I certainly got excited when I started buying clothes from them. There's so many cute ones. And when you see how like tiny they're, you're like, I want them, but yes, please rein it back a little bit. People will also buy you clothes, so just don't go too crazy with them. Along the lines of clothes are shoes. Shoes are 100% unnecessary for your kids. They are purely just like a vanity piece or an accessory at this point until they can walk. And even then when they can walk, it's highly recommended against putting shoes on their feet so that their feet can develop the right muscles as they're walking around the house. So you don't really need to give your baby shoes unless they're walking outside, which is why I think that baby shoes are overrated. They're so adorable. We obviously have a couple of pairs that were great and also 
because we live in Canada. It's super cold in the winter and he was born in November. We need to buy him snugly warm shoes that could keep his feet warm. We had zero intentions of him walking in them. I don't think he's gonna really walk until at least like maybe closer to a year. So while we have a couple of pairs, uh, a pair of like fluffy winter ones to keep his feet warm and some like sneakers just to wear right now since it's still a little bit chilly outside. It just essentially are designed to keep his feet warm and purely for vanity and photo purposes. Besides that, they're not gonna be walking in their shoes and there's no purpose to buy them shoes. So like, yeah, maybe get them like one or two pairs, but don't go overboard. They're totally overrated and like not necessary at all. This is a purchase that I used so much out of and I think contextually it just didn't really last long enough for us, but there are some valid uses for it and that is the Snuggle Me Organic. So we were gifted this and I'm so grateful that we received this as a gift because it is quite pricey, but I think you totally could get away with not purchasing this if you don't need it for your newborn. It's great if you have like a large couch or a bed and you're like lounging there with a the newborn, it keeps them in place and they can't really move and roll around too much to kind of like hurt themselves, provided you are supervising the baby. You're not supposed to just leave them in there and walk away. And I think this was really great whenever we need to bring Harrison around to our family and friends houses and we need to put him down somewhere and we didn't have the bassinet with us. So it would lock him in place. He fell asleep really well and really quickly in them because it felt like he was being held and we didn't have to constantly hold him. So say for example, if I was watching a movie at Mel and Dave's house, I would just put him in it next to me on the couch and we would be golden. We didn't get a lot of use out of the Snuggle Me Organic out of our own house just because Kobe likes to really go up and sniff Harrison. So I can't exactly leave Harrison in a Snuggle Me on the couch next to me. The potential risk of like Kobe jumping up. He doesn't really understand boundaries and likes to lick people's faces. So he's probably going to lick Harrison's face a lot. He's done a couple few times already. And we're trying to just avoid having that like dog mouth to baby face contact. Kobe likes to French kiss people. Not the best idea for baby. So yes, we weren't able to use it as much at home. We did use it on the dining table. We put down like a sheet, put the snuggle me on top and put Harrison in it while we were eating. But we ended up moving his bassinet around the house so much since we live in a bungalow that it was just easier for us to move the whole bassinet outside, put Harrison into it to sleep and then have the dining table accessible for us to eat on. He actually ended up growing out of it at around like three and a half to four months. I know you can definitely use it for way longer with babies. They can have their legs hanging over the sides. They can like rest their tummies on it. The primary issue for us was that we couldn't use it at home and we're home majority of the time. So that wasn't the best place for us to use it. We would bring it over to a friend's house sometimes, which was great, but then he outgrew it quickly. And although it's very plush and like fitted, his arms ended up going like this all the time and he just didn't look comfortable in it. So I don't know if we will continue using it. I might actually wait till he's a little bit older as a toddler and just use it as like a lounger for himself and then keep it around for the next baby. But I found that he grew out of it so quickly. It's just, it's expensive for what it is. And I don't think you get enough use out of it to fully justify the price. So like, yes, if you do have money splurge, go ahead, get it. But if it's on the more costlier side for you and you're wondering like, do you really need it? I don't think you need it per se. It's great, but it definitely is one of those like overhyped, overrated baby items. Next thing that is overrated are baby nail clippers. I think they're phenomenal. I am just personally way too afraid to use it. Um, I'm too afraid that I'm gonna clip his skin. Baby nails are super fragile, flimsy, but also like really sharp and they can scratch the hell out of their faces. Harrison is definitely carved up his own faces with his nails whenever we're late on trimming them. So you do really need to stay above your baby's nail growth and make sure that they're short and they're not too long, they don't scratch themselves. So I was personally just really afraid of clipping his skin and just like cutting him. So I ended up getting an electric file for my cousins, they gifted one to me. I love it. It's so easy to use, very foolproof. I was super apprehensive about it at first because I was like, does it look like those nail files that they use on your nails in a salon? It's much more gentle on a baby's hands. Don't worry, it's not gonna cut them. It's not gonna be too strong. My recommendation, if you are are going to use them, use them on your baby while they're asleep. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in like underrated baby stuff. A nail clipper I think is overrated. You don't necessarily need it. Go for an electric nail file instead. Do you have some baby nail clippers? I think we're actually gonna keep them around for when he's a little bit older, Um, probably more like the toddler stage, or like the infant stage when he's like older than one. His nails are a little bit stronger, sturdier. His hands are a little bit stronger. He can sit still for him to clip them and his skin is not as delicate. So I don't think it's necessary for baby, but you'll probably need them at some point because I think adult nail clippers might just be a little bit too powerful a kid's soft nails, but it's too powerful for a baby's nails, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think that no, baby clippers are overrated, but electric nail files are not. Okay, another thing that totally saved our lives for the few months that we had it, but is not getting as much longevity as I really hoped it would be, 
is a bouncer. So we love the Fisher Price bouncer that we have for Harrison. We were able to use it for, I think he took to it around like one and a half to two months and we've been using it solidly up until now. He's five months now. But the problem is, is that now that he's five months, he's learning to sit up by himself. And when babies can hoist themselves up, it really throws off the center of balance on a bouncer and it can flip the bouncer over and cause like serious injuries or harm to the babies. And I definitely wanna keep a very baby safe environment in our house for him. So I don't even know how much longer we're going to be able to use a bouncer when it comes to Harrison. We're probably going to have to put it away in the next few weeks as he's slowly sitting up more and more. Before we were able to put him into the bouncer, bring the bouncer into the kitchen with us and like do dishes and cook at the same time. But now that he's sitting up, I like essentially cannot risk a single moment of like turning away and him sitting up and potentially flipping the bouncer over. We got a lot of use out of it from like one and a half months until five months. But at this point, now that he's growing out of it, he really only had like three and a half months of using it. And I mean, you can buy some fairly affordable ones for like 50, 60, dollars but then like the baby bjorn ones or like the maxi cozy ones are like two three hundred dollars they're pricey and like once you can't use them what are you gonna do with it and it also takes up a lot of space if you are somebody who definitely needs a bouncer my recommendation would actually be get it secondhand because a lot of babies grow out of them and you can't really repurpose it to use for something else afterwards so there's always bouncers on the market on facebook marketplace on sites like rubble stork where they sell secondhand baby items that are used in such a short period of time it doesn't really have enough time for that item to like be used and abused. They're still in very good conditions. I think bouncers are overrated. They definitely do have their function and purpose and they're very valuable. I don't think you need to be buying them full price. And if you want to get one, then maybe look in the secondhand market if you don't have that financial freedom to be able to purchase a brand new one outright. Do I love them? Yes. I do still think they're overrated because you have such a short time span that you can actually use them for functionally before they no longer serve a purpose for you anymore. Okay, so that is everything that's overrated. Let's talk about underrated baby stuff. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible so this video doesn't go on forever but I actually have quite a long list of underrated baby things that I think everybody could do with like purchasing or getting more of so let's just jump right into that first up burp cloth so underrated um you end up using them way sooner than you think you can essentially use it right away as soon as you start feeding your baby and they get so dirty with milk it's not just like spit and the claws are small so after like at least with you know one feed or two feeds you're gonna have to throw in the wash because it gets disgusting you don't want the milk to like rot and grow mold on there so we go through quite a few of them in the day now that he can control himself a little bit more and not spit up as often we use one burp cloth for the entire day but if you're trying to be that like super clean parent you're probably going to use a burp cloth once and then throw in the laundry and get another one. That could potentially run you upwards of five to six burp cloths a day and like that's a lot. So I recommend getting a lot of them. They're not like the sexiest thing to think of when you're asking for things on a registry and it's not the first thing that comes to mind when people are buying you gifts, which is why I think they're so underrated. Like we only really received, I think one or two sets of burp cloths from our friends and like everyone was getting a swaddle. Put burp cloths onto your registry. It's a very functional gift and they can be cute if you buy cute prints on them. I just think that you really need way more of those than you need swaddles. You rotate through them so much more. Even now, as he's older and he can control himself he's drooling a lot more so we're using our burp cloths constantly to like wipe his face beyond just feeding him so super super underrated get way more of them you will thank yourself afterwards similar to burp cloths an underrated item are bibs Okay, so you don't really think that you have to use your bib right away when you first bring home your baby, but they're great once your baby starts drooling and teething. Harrison started drooling at around like two and a half months, way earlier than I thought he would because he had a tooth that was like starting to come in and I don't know if it's just like overactive saliva glands in his mouth or just the teething is causing him to drool, but he started drooling like a maniac. Most of the time we end up changing his clothes because he gets drool all over it and it's really cold on his skin. So we started putting bibs onto him so that we wouldn't have to change his whole outfit we would just replace his bibs he sometimes goes through like two or three bibs a day he can really soak one up completely like within an hour and it gets really heavy also damp soaks into a shirt underneath and then soaks onto his skin so we like to constantly revolve and replace them we have like a handful of like six to eight bibs now that are more than enough for us to like use let them dry reuse one more time and then throw them into the wash I know that sounds gross but it's literally just spit so there's nothing else on there guys but bibs super underrated you will get them as gifts but i would definitely say since you revolve through them as quickly as burp cloths definitely stack up on them you're going to probably use them a lot too as your baby starts to introduce solids into their world we can use those jelly bibs we have a couple of those for him he hasn't started using them yet because we're only just starting solids now but probably going to after down the road but it's just good to have bibs around especially when your kids are teething and they're starting to drool you don't want to get stuff all over the clothes so yes definitely invest in some bibs these are not the sexier things but ziplocs are 
such a must when it comes to baby. Whenever we go out and we bring bottles for him, I also pump. So it's not always easy for me to wash things if I don't have a bathroom at my disposal. If I do have a bathroom, then I rinse out all the stuff, um, but it's still wet and I don't have a drying rack with me wherever I go. So I throw everything into a Ziploc bag and then when we come back home we can, and then rinse and wash them out as many times as we want and continue using them. I also really like to throw his milk bottles into Ziploc bags before I pack them into my bag so I don't risk them spilling or leaking and getting on everything. The last thing you want is milk to leak all over your bag inside to get everything soaking wet. Not only are you wasting that milk, but you have a mess to clean up. So Ziploc bags are such a must. We get those like really big XL freezer ones. It fits like up to three bottles of his and like all of my pump parts. I keep like everything I need pump related per session in a bag. And I usually have two to three bags at any time being used in his diaper bag. And the next up are going to be doggy pee pads and a doggy bag. Though so I've mentioned this in some of my must have newborn items, but I wanted to bring them up again because I think they're super underrated and not necessarily something I always see people recommending in their videos. It's very off the cuff and you wouldn't really think of these items unless you had a pet and you had them at your disposal, but I highly, highly recommend picking up some doggy pee pads and doggy bags. One, doggy bags throw them into your diaper bag. Unless you have like plastic bags that you can just repurpose and throw them in there. You wanna keep some plastic bags in your diaper bag at any given point so that if you need to change your baby on the go, like say in the car, you can dispose of the diaper in this plastic bag and not have it like smell and leak everywhere. Doggy bags are great because they come in a roll, it's already organized, doesn't take up a lot of space and they're great for like a couple of uses and then you can just like throw them out. We have Kobe, we buy them for Kobe anyways. We figured this would be a great way to double use the bags and use them for Harrison too. If you have plastic bags, then like, yes, definitely throw them into your bag, it's just, when it comes to doggy bag, they come in rolls of like, I don't know, like 20 to 30. So I never have to really think about restocking these plastic bags into his diaper bag. I just like rip one off, use it, and the whole roll is there for you using it until I run out and I have to replenish. So highly recommend doggy bags. They are great to dispose of like diaper stuff that you don't need if you had to change on the go. Now I mentioned doggy pee pad. Not really a must if you have waterproof things and like mattress protectors and stuff. We have a foam, not like a dry foam, but like a spongy foam changing pad table. And we noticed that every time we changed him, sometimes he leaked, sometimes he peed, sometimes he pooped on the changing pad. And it was such a hassle to clean it because it would get into the fabric, into the foam, we'd have to like wash it, air it out. And just like over time, it just wasn't working out for us. So I came up with an nifty idea of laying down a doggy pee pad where his like bum area is and also at his head. So if he decides to like throw up while we're changing him, all we had to do is scrap the pee pad and everything underneath is still clean. So what I do now is I take the foam changing table, put the pee pad onto it and then put a swaddle on top to kind of just like cover it. So it's a little bit more comfortable for him and he's not like lying directly on crinkle all the time. And it has saved us from so many accidents. I just literally take off the pee pad, change the swaddle and then we're done. The foam underneath on his changing pad does not get dirty and our life is saved. Same thing for his bassinet. We just lined a pee pad as a mattress protector and then put the sheet on top so that if he ever peed, obviously we can take off the sheet, throw it in the wash, take out the pee pad and it doesn't stain to the actual foam mattress underneath and it just saves our lives completely. We actually also repurpose the pee pads for Kobe too. We don't just throw it out directly because it's such a small patch on like a giant square and it'd be such a waste to throw it out completely. Also when Harrison leaks, it's not that much. It's just like little small puddles. So we just like fold it up and keep it in a pile like to be used for Kobe and Kobe has no issue reusing it. Doggy pee pads are the way to go. Stock up on them and you won't regret it. They're gonna save you so much time when it comes to like washing and changing the baby linens. I mentioned before in the overrated baby items, underrated is an electric file. So great, they're very safe and effective to use and they're so quick as opposed to like sitting there for hours like filing it manually or using a clipper and risking clipping a baby's nails. I file Harrison's nails when he's asleep because he doesn't really like the sensation of it when he's awake. He strangely enough sleeps through it. I don't know how the vibration of like doing it on his hand maybe soothes him to sleep, but I don't know. I get it done in like less than five minutes and you definitely want to control your baby's fingernail growth because they will scratch the shit out of themselves and out of you. And if you let them grow for too long, you're gonna have like, I'm not even joking, Harrison has like two scratches on his nose right now that were bleeding because he scratched himself and I wait a little bit too long to file his nails down. It's not pretty. So we file his nails every like week and a half. I think that's like a good system for us right now. The file has definitely saved our lives. It is so fast and efficient. Like I said, under five minutes for both both hands and when he's asleep, it's like the smoothest process in the world. Highly, highly recommend that. Definitely add that to your own baby registry. Another thing that I think is underrated because people always say that you don't really need it is a bottle warmer. Yes, you can definitely go the traditional route of like boiling water and then dunking your baby bottle into it. But we just really love the feasibility and efficiency of having a bottle warmer. Peter and I are both like really on the go. So I like that it's one of those items that you can like set it and forget it. I just like pop the bottle in, turn it on, let it do its thing while I'm prepping Harrison. We can change his diaper while it's heating up and then I know for sure when it's done, it turns off. It's perfectly set 
at the right temperature and I don't even have to think about it because it does take about like five, six minutes for the bottle to heat up. I don't want to stand in front of a stove watching water boil and then taking it off or using a kettle and then pouring it into something else and then putting the bottle into it, setting a timer and coming back and making sure I take it out before the milk gets too hot. It's easier with a bottle warmer. Trust me, if this is something that you have the money to splurge on, I highly recommend it. It is life-changing. You just, it's not that big of like a time saver if you think about it because it's just like five minutes here and there. But like at the end of a day, you save almost like a half hour of your time and you can be doing other stuff at the same time, especially like if you have a baby that screams when they're hungry and you have to do other things like breastfeed first and then feed with the bottle or change the diaper and then feed with the bottle. It just, you can get multiple things done at once and it's going to save so much of your time. So definitely get yourself a bottle warmer. Another thing that I think is underrated and it is pricey. So if you can afford it, definitely get them. But there's always so many videos out there that show you how to create like dupes of these. And they are the Love Every subscription boxes. I am not being paid to say this at all. Transparently Love Every does send us a kit each time just for us to play with Harrison and see if we like it or not. I am not required to speak about them on here, but I do really love the kits so much. And I just like the aspect that it takes all the guesswork out of determining what sort of toys are appropriate for each age group for your kids. And we just know right off the bat, like what do you do with him? What to use, which toys are great and what specific developmental milestones they're targeting, which is why I love them so much. I've already purchased out of my own pocket the starter kits for a couple of my friends and families who also had kids too. And they've also loved it, which is why I wanted to share Love Everyone here with you guys. But if you guys do want to purchase it, I would definitely appreciate if you use my affiliate link below. I just make like a very slight commission off of it. That's essentially it. So thank you if you do use that link. If you don't, that's cool with me too. That is essentially everything overrated and underrated when it comes to baby stuff. I hope that you guys found this really helpful. I also want to mention one more thing for the Love Every Kits. There's definitely so many resources online on YouTube and on Google as to how to dupe these kits on your own and to like do DIY and create your own versions if you don't want to spend that much money for them because they are a little bit pricey, but you can obviously reuse them with like future kids or like loan them out to your friends whatever. But yes, you can find dupes online or like how to recreate your own kits and purchase them for yourselves without having to go through Love Every and get their specific stuff. But I do want to share with you, I'm loving their kits. They're great. You just get them sent straight to your door. You don't have to think about it. And it just takes the guesswork out of it, which is why I like it. Underrated, overrated. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you are a first time parent, you're expecting soon, or you just had a baby, or if you have friends that are going to be having kids soon and you want to find gifts for them. And I hope that you found this super valuable when it comes to things that are great and not so great for kids. I know we spent a lot of money buying stuff and being gifted stuff that after a while we're like, we're not getting a lot of use out of this. Like, oh, how is this functional? And a lot of other stuff are like, I'm buying so much of this stuff all the time. I can't get enough of it. I just need more. You're hemming and hawing between one or the other. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate if you subscribed. We're at 10K now, so excited. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. But yes, um, if you guys wanna see more of me and videos like this, also let me know if you like videos like this and you want more kind of like recommendations and like on recommendations for things that you don't really need when it comes to baby. I am more than happy to share more of these. I think the next video I will be making is going to be about baby led weeding. That's going to be the next major milestone step that we're taking with Harrison. So let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And if you do want to see them, make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on them. I am doing a new posting schedule once a week now. It's a little bit more manageable than twice a week, every Thursday at 7 p.m. EST. So make sure you come back for that. And if you want to see more of me, you guys know where to find me on Instagram and on TikTok. Post on both of those platforms platforms a little bit more frequently than YouTube so you can see a lot more of me on there if you're not already sick of seeing me here. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks again for watching this video. I will see you next month.